What a quiet place. Indeed, yes, very quiet. Very quiet. There's your bathroom, miss. I uh, see we have the same bathroom. I think I'd better introduce myself. I'm Vera Claythorne, Mrs. Owen's secretary. Oh, my name is Emily Brent. Is there anything you want, miss? Well, I'd like to see Mrs. Owen. I'm Mrs. Owen's new secretary. I expect you know that. No, miss. I don't know anything. Just a list of the ladies and gentlemen who were invited for the weekend. Didn't Mrs. Owen mention me? I, I haven't seen Mrs. Owen yet. We only came here a few days ago. Oh. This is a large house. What staff have you here? Just me and Rogers, miss. Does Mr. Owen know we've arrived? He's not here yet, sir. Uh, where's Mrs. Owen? Oh, they were delayed in London, sir. I uh, got a letter. They'll be here for dinner. Eight o'clock, sir. We tell the story in Ireland about the two Englishmen who were cast away on a desert island for three years and never spoke to each other because they hadn't been introduced. I'm not English. My name is Prince Nikita Starlov. Call me Nicky. Well, that breaks the ice, gentlemen. I'm Judge Quincannon. How do you do, sir? I'm uh, Dr. Armstrong. My name's Lombard. Philip Lombard. I'm General Mandrake. Sir John Mandrake, isn't it, General? Some years ago, I was called in consultation. Your wife was ill. My wife is dead, sir. If you gentlemen will be good enough to follow me, I will show you to your rooms. I'm afraid I didn't catch your name. Blore. Blore. William Henry Blore. Oh, Philip Lombard. I'm afraid you've got the wrong bag. You're very observing, Mr. Blore. CM, Charles Morley, an old friend of mine. I like his taste. I even bought him his clothes. Oh, excuse me, Doctor. Uh, I thought this was a closet. It seems we're sharing a bathroom. Oh, I... I didn't know. <laughs> the only time I regret being a bachelor is when I have to dress for dinner. Let me help you. Thank you. Do you uh, know this part of the English coast? No, I can't say I do. Something magical about an island. Yeah, like a little world of its own. How would you like to spend your last days here? Oh, no thanks. I think a weekend will be enough. Uh, we all build islands in imagination. It represents escape. Half of my patients are sick because they're trying to escape reality. Well, what's your answer? Oh, I tell them fairy tales. <laughs> I build them islands of imagined security. Don't you believe in medicine, Doctor? <laughs> Do you believe in justice, Judge? <laughs> Do you think they're done? Done enough for them. Oh! Ethel. Don't stand there gawking. Get them up. Did you wash the floor this morning? Do you suppose I have time for everything? It's not right to go inviting a house full of guests. I'll talk to Mr. Owen when he comes. You tell him we're quitting. The agency didn't tell us the house was so big and so lonely. You knew it was an island. Huh, with only one house. Makes me nervous. Here. What they don't know won't hurt him. If anyone has to eat a pick of dirt before he dies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I propose a toast to our gracious hostess, Mrs. Owen. 
Uh, uh, doctor, I saw you. You drank water. It's bad luck. Water never hurt anyone, sir. Especially in my profession. Don't forget the old proverb, doctor. Never trust a man who doesn't drink. <laughs> Sounds like the Bible. <laughs> Great book. And now I give you our charming host, Mr. Owen. Jolly good fellow. And I hope, sir, that will conclude all possible toasts. Tell me, Miss Claythorne, why do they call this place Indian Island? I don't know. Uh, excuse me, sir. The boatman told me it's because it's shaped like the head of an Indian. Oh, oh that accounts for the little Indians. Indians! We are not out of toast, sir. I drink to the Indians, each little Indian, individually. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten little Indians. Ten little Indians. It's like a nursery ride. Ten little Indian boys went out to dine. One choked his little self, and then there were nine. Oh, poor little fellow. Here's to him. And what happened to the others? Nine little Indian boys sat up very late. One overslept himself, and then there were eight. Then what happened? You'll find the rhymes on the piano. Mr. Owen seems to be fond of little Indians. in Devon. One said he'd stay right there and then there were seven. Seven little Indian boys chopping up some sticks till one chopped himself in half and then there were six. Six little Indian boys playing with a hive, a bumblebee stung one of them and then there were five. Five little Indian boys going in for law. Now one got enchantery and then there were four. Four little Indian boys going out to sea. A red herring swallowed one and then there were three. Three little Indian boys walking in the snow. A big bear hug one, and then there was two. The place for nursery rhymes is in the nursery. Don't worry, Judge. He's down to the last Indian. Two little Indian boys sitting in the sun. One got all frizzled up, and then there was one. One little Indian boy left all alone. The Usher. So he went and hanged himself, and then there were none. Silence, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, Mr. Owen, speaking. You are charged with the following crimes. General... Sir John Mandrake, that you did deliberately send your wife's lover, Lieutenant Arthur Macefield, to his death. Emily Brent, that you did cause and bring about the death of your young nephew, Peter Brent. Dr. Edward G. Armstrong, that through uncontrolled drunkenness, you did kill Mrs. Mary Cleese, Prince Nikita Stala that you were guilty of the murder of Fred and Lucy Marlowe. Vera Claythorne, that you did murder your sister's fiancé, Richard Barclay. Judge Francis J. Quintanon, that you were responsible for the death by hanging of one Edward Seaton. Philip Lombard, that you were guilty of the death of 21 men, members of an East African tribe. William H. Bloor, that by perjuring your testimony, you did bring about the death of James Landor, Thomas and Ethel Rogers, that you brought about the death of your invalid employer, Mrs. Jennifer Brady. <coughs> Prisoners at the Bar of Justice, have you anything to say in your defense? Silence, please. Ladies and gentlemen, 
This is your host, Mr. Up. What's going on here? What kind of a practical joke is this? It's on the record. <laughs> An outrageous lie. It's called Swan Song. May I ask who put this on the gramophone? I did, sir. Why? I didn't know what it was. On my oath, I didn't know. I, I was just obeying orders, sir, that's all. Whose orders? Mr. Owens? No, let's get this quite clear. Mr. Owens' orders were what exactly? To put the record on at, at nine o'clock. It was sealed up. I, I, I thought it was just a piece of music. It's the truth, sir. I haven't seen Mr. Owen. I was telling my wife. I told you we shouldn't have come here. I want to get away. Shut up. First thing to do, Rogers, is to get your wife to bed. May I have your attention, please? This letter to Rogers is signed by Mr. U.N. Owen. I must confess I don't know Mr. Owen personally. What kind of a man is he? Who knows him? <laughs> you all come to a house and you don't know the host. What about yourself, your highness? Oh, with me it's different. I am a professional guest. I knew we shouldn't have come here. Quiet, Ethel. I knew somebody would find out about it someday. I told you. Shut up, I tell you. <laughs> Oh, she's quite out of her head, Doctor. Uh, hysteria induced by shock. Uh, give her this sedative. Ten drops and half a glass of water. Yes, sir. She doesn't sleep. Repeat the dose in two hours. Oh, I, uh, I hope she'll sleep, Doctor. Uh, Doctor Armstrong, we've taken all the evidence except your own. What's your reason for being here? Well, uh, quite frankly, I came here professionally. Uh, I received a letter from Mr. Owen asking me to come here and spend the weekend and pretend to be a guest so that I <laughs> might examine his wife who had refused to see a doctor. I'll summarize our findings. We've all received letters from old, trusted friends inviting us to spend the weekend here as guests of their friends, the Owens. Miss Claythorne was employed through an agency and told to report to Mrs. Owen. This letter to Mr. Lombard is the only one directed from Mr. Owen. <laughs> Very peculiar. I might even call it threatening. What do you say? I say that the only person whose presence here hasn't been explained is that gentleman. Well, Your Honor, I see no reason to conceal any longer. I'm here to do a job. I'm desired. By whom? This man Owen. You saw him? No. He closed a fat money order with that. <laughs> Told me to join the house party and pose as one of the guests. I run a detective agency in Plymouth. I got me credentials. Look here, Judge. All of these letters refer to our host as U. M. Owen. U. M. O. Unknown. I'm still not clear as to the purpose of our unknown host in getting us to assemble here. In my opinion, this person, whoever he may be, is not of normal mind. He may be dangerous. I think it would be well for us all to leave this island immediately. I quite agree, sir. Rogers, how soon can we get the boat from the mainland? I can't, sir. There's no telephone. The boat only comes twice a week, sir. It won't come again till Monday. And this is only Friday. You have no boat here? <laughs> no, sir. Why do you want to leave, my friends? Why don't we get to the bottom of this mystery? It's wonderful. Really? Our time of life, sir, we've no desire for thrills, as you call them. Your legal mind has lost its taste for adventure. I am all for crime, Your Honor. May I propose a toast? Here is to crime. <sighs> Oh, 
perfectly disgusting. To drink like an animal. Huh? What'd you say? He's not moving. Just plain drunk. Just plain dead. What'd the doctor say? to report to the owner of this house. But Mr. Owen isn't the owner, sir. She's only leased it for the season. Ah, then you know more than you told us. Come, come, Rogers. I'm quite sure that there's no one else on this island. I'd swear to it, sir. I believe you, Rogers. But I'm afraid your story will be questioned by the police. you'd gone to bed, Mr. Blower. In our profession, Doctor, we don't always do what we appear to do. Perhaps it's the same in yours. Why don't you want me to touch that glass? I thought it'd be inadvisable for you to have your fingerprints on it. Smell it. Little solution. Suicide? That, I believe, comes under your profession, sir. Doctor! Doctor Armstrong! Doctor Armstrong. What is it, Rogers? It's the wife, sir. She doesn't look right to me. Go ahead, I'll follow you. I hope you slept better than I did. I slept very well, thank you. I have nothing on my conscience. Good morning, General. Good morning. General Mandrake. Yes, Juliet? Oh, forgive me, young lady. I, I was thinking of my wife. Good morning, Miss Claythorne. What about breakfast? Do you mind if I sit down like this? Morning, Judge. Morning, Miss Brent. Mm -hmm. Why, is something worrying you? I don't understand it. A lot of things I don't understand, sir. These are the figures. How many were there last night? Ten. Ten, yeah. Rogers found one broken after, uh, after what happened. And now, how many do you see? Eight. Only eight. Eight? That's what I counted. Oh, let Mr. Owen worry about it. They're his Indians. What about breakfast? I'm huh? afraid you'll have to go without breakfast. Mrs. Rogers died in her sleep. What? what? Mrs. Rogers? How? Heart failure? Heart certainly failed to beat. What caused it to fail, I cannot say. Conscience? Oh, conscience, my eye. What about her husband? He was scared to death. I fear his wife would talk. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry there's no breakfast prepared, but you see, my wife's all right, Rogers. Of course, Rogers, we understand. But uh, I thought you told us he was dead. His wife. Eh? His, His wife. wife. Wife? No, no, no. I don't think a man would ever kill his wife. No matter how guilty she was. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. 
Two accidental deaths in 12 hours? I don't believe it. No lie. What do you say, Judge? How does the Ryan Gomez Clayton? The tender Indians? One chopped his little self and they never nigh. Uh -huh. Go on. One never slapped himself and then there were eight. What do you see? <coughs> I, I thought I heard a strange voice. Um, gentlemen, I have come to the conclusion that the invisible Mr. Owen is hiding somewhere on this island. Extraordinary. I was looking for you to tell you the same thing. That's what I think, sir. Me too. We've all come to the same opinion. We must find this place of concealment. Immediately. So long as there is a lunatic at large, we are in mortal danger. Hello, Puss. Looking for a mouse? So are we. What I'd like to know is whether we're the cat or the mouse. Nobody in the general's room, not even the general. What about the old boy? I don't know. I don't think he even knows where he is himself. Nothing in there but the Russian. I keep hearing that song he was singing last night, just before he popped off. Tender Indians. Yeah. It certainly was his swan song. One thing is certain, he isn't inside, therefore he must be outside. Brilliant thinking, Blore. Eh? It's no use watching for the boat. Won't come till Monday. No boat will ever come, Julian. We're here forever. What made you love him, Juliet? Sir John. Oh. Forgive me, my child. You don't understand. Nobody, not a living thing, not even a hiding place. Not even a seagull could hide down there. I don't understand it. Maybe we've been wrong, built up a nightmare out of imagination. Two people dead isn't imagination. The Russian may have committed suicide. And Mrs. Rogers? Well, you didn't give her an overdose last night, did you? Doctors can't afford to make mistakes of that kind. We cannot blunder as detectives sometimes do. Wouldn't be your first mistake if that gramophone record is to be believed. Gentlemen, gentlemen, this is no time for quarreling. Let's face it, we're in a trap. You shouldn't forget the ten little Indians on the dinner table. That's right. Mr. Owen's hand is plain to see. Yes, but where the devil is Mr. Owen himself? Oh, it is on this island. He'll catch his death of cold. That's supposed to be a joke. I don't see the point. All we have to do is to keep quiet and we'll hear him sneeze. Oh. I'm sorry. It's only cold meat and salad. I, I did the best I could. Oh, oh we are Rogers. We're only seven today. I'm sorry. Have you called General Mandrake? Oh, I, I looked in his room, miss, but he's not there. 
Didn't he come in the house? I didn't see him, Doctor. Not the last time he was mooning around on the beach. He seemed quite abnormal. I know where he is. You stay here, Miss Claythorne. You say the general was behaving very strangely. Like a man out of his mind. In other words, a lunatic. Right, oh, the old boy's balmy. Whom the gods destroy, they first make mad. Well, aren't we looking for a lunatic? He said no boat will ever come. Then he knows something. Maybe he's not as crazy as we think he is. Poison glass could mean suicide. An overdose of sedative might have been an accident. But this instrument, which you saw me remove from the back of the third victim, means only one thing. Murder. Or an act of God. My dear lady, in my experience of ill-doing, Providence leaves the work of punishment to us mortals. Evidently, Mr. Owen believes we're guilty of certain crimes which the law cannot touch, and he's appointed himself to execute justice. That is why he has enticed us to this island. There's no one on this island, I tell you, no one. Doctor, Doctor Armstrong. What is it, man? There's another little Indian figure missing. That accounts for the general. I was expecting that. You just said there's no one on this island. In the sense you mean no. Nevertheless, I'm now certain that Mr. Owen is here. How can he be here? I don't believe in the invisible man. He's not invisible. Mr. Owen could only come to this island in one way. It's perfectly clear. Mr. Owen is one of us. studying Mr. Owen's little scheme. Maybe you know how the general was killed. My dear Bloor, can't you read? Eight little Indian boys traveling in Devon. One said he'd stay there, and then there were seven. The old soldier stayed here, didn't he? Am I disturbing your little game? Not at all, Bloor. Nothing clears the mind like a game of precision. What game are you playing, Judge? We've come to the conclusion that Doctor and I, that this whole story is a game of the mind. There we are. Eight of us came to this island. The Rogers were waiting for us. Don't forget, waiting for us. One of the ten is Mr. Owen. Well, we agree on that. Out of all of us, three persons are definitely cleared. Who? Oh. The dead ones. Our Russian friend, Mrs. Rogers, and the general. Seven little Indians left. Six. One is bogus. Correct, sir. One of us is Mr. Owen. Which one? Where's your alibi? I'm not like you, Mr. Blower. I'm a well-known professional man. My dear doctor, that proves less than nothing. I, too, am a well-known person. But doctors have gone mad before now. Judges have gone mad. So have policemen. 
And uh, may I say, explore us, Mr. Lombard? You may, you may. Why do you leave Miss Claythorne out of it? We don't. No, you, my dear lady. Well, I quite appreciate that nobody can be exonerated without proof. What about Rogers? That's what I'm thinking. What do we know about him? He put that record on the gramophone, didn't he? That's a fact. How do we know Rogers didn't lease his house and pretend to be the butler? Oh, no, no, no. Bad psychology. You can rule Rogers out definitely. Oh, I don't see why. Look at the shape of his head. He hasn't the brains for it. And don't forget there's something else, sir. My wife was one of the victims. In my time, Rogers, I've had several husbands before me guilty of the murder of the wives. Oh, well, if you put it that way, sir, they, they do sometimes drive a man crazy. We must suspect each and every one among us. No, I warn everybody to be on his guard. If not... We shall all go the same way. And Mr. Owen will very soon be alone on this island. E flat, Miss Claythorne. Aren't you afraid the others will think you're playing inappropriate? Can't stand silence. I have to do something. Go on, play. If it's any comfort to you, there's one person who doesn't suspect you. Thank you. Aren't you going to return the compliment? I haven't made up my mind about you, Mr. Lombard. Whom do you suspect? I think you're wrong. Well, who then? A man who believes in punishing crimes. His brain might snap and he'd want to be executioner after having been a judge. Rogers, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Did you <laughs> prepare a nice dinner? Oh, just cold meat, sir. Ah, I see. Well, I'm sure you'll do your best, Rogers. <laughs> Is there uh, plenty of food for the weekend? Oh, yes, sir. Everything was provided for. Oh, oh Mr. Blow, may I uh, ask you a question? Of course, of course, my dear fellow. How many will you be for dinner tonight? But, uh, oh, I, I see what you mean. <laughs> Don't forget your vote, Rogers. In a case like this, a secret vote is the only way to bring out into the open what we're all thinking. Never touch it, no. But uh, under the circumstances. Now, who do we suspect of being Mr. Owen? Mr. Lombard, one vote. Mr. Blow, one vote. Ha <laughs> ha. Dr. Armstrong, one vote. Rogers, one vote. Miss Brent, one vote. Uh, I see, I haven't been neglected. One vote. Another vote for you, Rogers. You win. 
You mean, sir, that I am being accused? Well, it's not precisely a majority, but you have the most votes. They're saying it's me because I'm only a butler. You said I didn't have the brains to do it. I didn't vote for you, Rogers. Well, who did then? But who didn't drink the cocktails you just served? You think I poisoned those cocktails? Well, I'll show you, sir. Picking on an innocent man. I can't touch even a drop of alcohol. No, I and if that's what you think of me, I'm not going to serve any dinner. Oh, why? Oh, why? Oh, why? Oh, why? Oh, why? Oh, why? Don't look so offended, Rogers. If it had been anybody but you, sir. I'm sorry, Rogers, but how do I know you didn't vote for me? I didn't, Your Honor. I voted for... Well, time will tell. Well, after all, Rogers, nobody in this house is above suspicion. Never in my life have I been accused of any crime, sir. What about that gramophone record? What about it? That woman you worked for, she left you some money, didn't she? Let's not stand on her dignity, Rogers. After all, she was sick. Didn't you, um, shorten her suffering in this world? With the complicity, of course, of poor Mrs. Rogers. I'm not going to argue with you, sir. But what makes you think I would kill anybody who wasn't going to leave me any money? <laughs> no, thank you. Pardon me. Obviously, we can't sit up all night like this. I'm going to retire. Good night. If you don't mind, I'll say good night, too. If you don't mind, Miss Claythorn, I'd rather go upstairs alone. May I remind you, Miss Brent, that I'm the only one whose name wasn't mentioned in the voting. That's what I mean. I find that fact most peculiar. I know Miss Brent won't mind if there's a third person. Not so fast, Mr. Lombard. I'll go with you. The more the merrier. And the safer. Warm in here, isn't it? And, uh, lonely. Yeah, quite lonely, quite, quite lonely. Rogers! Yes, sir. Oh, would you mind keeping us company for a while? <laughs> Anything you wish, sir. <coughs> Don't put any water in. I shall, sir. <laughs> Good night, Miss Claythorn. Don't forget to lock your door. You cannot lock out the devil. There's another one who's bar me. Looks like it'll end with the old lot going that way. I don't fancy you will, Lord. No. Take a lot to send me off my head. I don't think you'll be going that way either. I feel quite sane at the moment. Thank you. Have you told him? Yes, sir. I know the jury's decision. You'd feel safer if I didn't stay inside the house tonight. Well, then, I shall sleep in the woodshed. And now, if you'll excuse me, good night. I'll lock it behind him. That's not enough, Mr. Blow.
Still seven. Lock that door, please. Put the key there. We'll have no more Indian tricks tonight. Lock it, Mr. Bro. No way. Now no one can get in there but you. Oh, I see. Well, but, but who's going to keep it? Roger. Open up, Roger. Keep away from that door. It's me, Lombard. Open up. Do you take me for a fool, Mr. Lombard? Don't be silly, Roger. Don't be silly yourself, sir. This is Judge Quintanon. You know my voice, Rogers. Dr. Armstrong. This is Bro, Rogers. Open the door. At a term like this, I wouldn't open the door, even if it was Santa Claus. We just want to give you a key. What for? Never mind, you idiot. Hurry up, it's raining. Shove it under the door, sir. Good night, Roger. Keep your door locked. <laughs> Don't worry about me, sir. Oh, be careful, Judge. Oh, I shall. You know, the common cold kills more people than... Never mind. I need hardly advise you to lock your doors. And put a chair under the handle. There are ways of turning locks from the outside. And if it should turn out the one of you is Mr. Owen, just remember, I'm a very light sleeper. Good night. Good night, gentlemen. May we all meet safely in the morning. Good night. Good night, sir. Not here. You grasp a fact very quickly, Bloor. What's wrong, Mr. Bloor? Miss Brent's missing. I locked at all your doors. She was the only one who didn't answer. What's wrong with that? It's late. Yes, we all of us slept. I had to get up. She must have gone downstairs. I locked that door last night. Who opened it? Look. Good morning. Oh, it's such a pretty pattern. I thought I'd like to copy it for a new shawl. Was that door locked when you went out? Oh, yes, I opened it. Good morning, Miss Brent. I, too, like to walk before breakfast, but I wouldn't have gone out alone. I feel perfectly safe when I'm alone. Thank you. I share your feeling. But didn't you know that Rogers was outside? Poor man. I hope he didn't catch cold. What's that? Someone's knocking. Kitchen door. Rogers, of course. He wants to get in. I said we forgot all about breakfast. Where is he? Well, somebody was knocking. Rogers! Rogers! He's not there. Rogers! Know what I think? 
we've got our man. It's Rogers. It fits the psychological pattern. His behavior last night was distinctly abnormal. Psychological pattern, my eye. I go by facts. He was officially accused. Fact. He got drunk. He wouldn't open the door to the woodshed. Fact. Realizing this morning that he'd gone to the end of his rope, he disappears. Fact. There's another fact you haven't mentioned about Rogers. He's dead. The murder was fastidious. He cleaned this blade after striking down his victim. Obviously, he crept up behind, swung this chopper, and brought it down, splitting the cranium. Seven little Indian boys chopping up sticks. One chopped himself in half, and then there were six. Would it have needed much strength to strike the blow? Well, a woman could have done it, if that's what you mean. Miss Claythorne was locked in her room, Doctor. If that's what you mean. We were all in our rooms. Except... No breakfast yet? No. I had a butler like Rogers. I'd soon get rid of him. Wait, we've forgotten something. What? The dining room. <laughs> Still out. Where's the keys? We found it in Roger's pocket. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another one missing? But the door was locked. I get it. No, I don't. Did you ever hear of a bee sting being fatal? No. Why? Six little Indian boys playing with a hive. A bumblebee stung one, and then there were five. Very stupid to kill the only servant in the house. Now we don't even know where to find the marmalade. Watch out for a bee. I'd be careful of that young man. I mean to, Miss Brent. I'm careful of everyone. A clear conscience is the best armor. This island is an image of life. Innocence has to live surrounded by criminals. That sounds like Mr. Owen talking. I see nothing wrong with his idea of punishing the guilty. What about his accusations against you? I wonder if these eggs are fresh. What about it, Miss Brent? Your young nephew, aren't you to blame for his death? Family gossip, Miss Claythorne. My sister's boy had bad blood, from his father's side, of course. Whipping did no good. Naturally, I had to have him placed in the reformatory. I do hope these eggs aren't overcooked. What happened to the boy? Oh, I never saw him again. He added to his many sins by hanging himself. Anyone inside the house could leave without being noticed. The murderer meets Rogers outside and kills him. He then takes the key from his victim's pocket, and you know the rest. But the key was still in Rogers' pocket. Of course. The murderer puts the key back in Rogers' pocket and goes to bed again. All goes for an innocent walk before breakfast. Sorry, Miss Brent. Anyone have more tea? Lombard! Lombard! Yes, Blo? What are you doing here? You called me, didn't you? Uh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I ain't saying, but don't you think the old judge knows too much? Describing every move? You think he'd been at the scene of the crime? My dear Blois, in my opinion, you haven't a chance. What's that? Lack of imagination. 
A criminal with a brain like you and Owen can think rings around you any time he wants to. No man ever got the better of me. Yet. How about a woman? Yes, yes. One should never trust a woman. She's purely a manic depressive. I don't know why I didn't see it before. She was very strange in the kitchen this morning. We all behaved strangely. But I find no evidence. She left no clue. But she did. What about this, eh? No sane person would think of using seaweed as a pattern for a shawl. She tried to throw us off the track. It's her. I'll stake my life, it's her. Wait, Lord. Let Miss Claythorn call her. She'll be less suspicious. Miss Brandt! Miss Brandt! No use, Miss Claiborne. She'll not answer. Look at the bee. Look at the bee. Just an ordinary bee, Miss Claiborne. Nothing. But a small mark on the neck. Here's your bee, Doctor. artistic touch. He likes to stick to his blasted nursery jingle. It's mad. We're all mad. I'm not, Mr. Lombard. I still have my reasoning powers. There are five of us left. One of us is a murderer. The rest of us are defenseless. Defenseless? How do we know one of us hasn't got a revolver? A good point, Floor. How do we know? Well, I know I haven't got one. Tim, it's against the law. How about you, Doctor? Why, of course not. You may search me, gentlemen. Search me. Miss Claythorne? I wish I had. Quite right, Miss Claythorne. It's an unfortunate oversight. One should never be careless when visiting a place one doesn't know. Why didn't you tell us you had a revolver? Nobody asked me. I'm sorry, in 30 seconds. Aren't you wasting your time? I know where it is. George, you said just now that one of us was the murderer. If I were you, I wouldn't let the law get at that gun. It's not here. Look again, Blore. It's got to be there. Look at his pocket. No, we'll take him off. We'll take him off. Not here. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Good heavens, where is it? The one who can answer that question. He's obviously not going to speak. At a time like this, Game of the mind, Deplore, a game of the mind. You know, the safest thing for you to do is to stay in your room with the door locked. What about yourself? Oh, I wouldn't stay out here alone with any of the others. Why not? Don't you think it's strange that there's never a third person present when anything unpleasant occurs? Mr. Owen, always.
always manages to be alone with his victim. When a third person is present, nothing happens. Doesn't that make you nervous? Out here with me, alone? But we're not alone. I asked Mr. Blore to keep an eye on us. He's my third person. Blore! Look, another misfortune. Something wrong with the machinery. The batteries must be running down. We've got to keep every light in the house burning tonight. I'll go to the woodshed and see to it. Leave it on, Doctor. Leave it on. So you off your game, Hulk, this uh, flickering? You went away from the window and left me alone. I've got to go to the woodshed. You better go to your room and lock your door. I shall. Miss Clayford. I don't know. Where's Bloor? Right out of the woodshed. Woodshed? What's wrong, Doctor? Oh, I see. You and I were we are alone in the house. Lama! Lama! Come here! Don't leave us! Miss Claythorne, answer me. Don't come any closer. Where is she? Keep back. Lord, if you don't tell me, I swear I'll kill you. If you make another move, I'll, I'll pay you. No, don't. Please. Give me a chance. If you are, Mr. Owen. For heaven's sake, tell me. I, 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 I won't say a word to the others. Don't torment me this way. If, if you want to kill the others, I won't interfere. I won't say a word. I'll even help you if you'll spare my life. Look. I trust you. Don't you trust me? Um, yes. That's more reason. Don't draw me closer! Isn't your arm getting tired? Don't worry about me. Listen, if Miss Clayphorn is safe in her room, as you say, we're both behaving like idiots. Can't get around me that way. I prefer being a living idiot. Someone's coming. What? Miss Clayphorn. I told you to stay locked in your room. I'm looking for... Oh. He's right, Vera. You shouldn't be so careless. Come on. Stay here, both of you. Now I can do what I came out to do. Do you know anything about electricity? Don't bother me. I get it! Stay where you are! I shan't move an inch. Neither will I. Till the light comes on. Do you think it will? Why not? This is no accident. Someone wants this house to be dark tonight. Who? The one we fear. But my dear doctor, he's made a mistake. This uh, trick of putting out the lights. She is two people. You and me. Now we can trust each other. I see. Yes, the, the idea was to keep us in fear of each other. But now we can form the lines, you and I. The murderer. We no longer have anything to conceal from each other, have we? Just what I was thinking. Oh, I needed that. <laughs> Who's going to speak first? Very well. I shall begin. As you know, Mr. Owen claimed that uh, I was responsible for the death of one Edward Seaton. It's perfectly true. He was an innocent man on trial for his life. I had nothing against him. 
I wanted to ruin the reputation of his defending counsel, who lost the case, while his client uh, lost his life. Doctor, tell us the truth. Your fate depends on it. I'm convinced of that. The gramophone record did not lie. I operated on Mrs. Cleese while I was under the influence of... Uh, guilty I was, but of drinking, not of killing. I don't see where this is getting us. Sit down, Mr. Blore. This is getting us to a very important conclusion. Isn't that right, Doctor? If I were you, I would uh, speak, Mr. Blore. I didn't kill anybody. Well, listening, Mr. Blow. This Landor chap was innocent, all right. But I was mixed up with the gang that was out to get him. On my testimony, he got sent up for life. That's all. But he died in prison, didn't he? Of course he did. How could I know that would happen? What about yourself, Mr. Lombard? What about those 21 poor natives in South Africa? Don't get excited, Bloor. Mr. Lombard is unable to deny a thing. Ah, that's the first thing you said I believe. Are you leaving us, Miss Clayton? My dear child, you're trembling. I... I'm so cold. Would you like us to postpone this inquiry while we build a fire? That would mean going outside to get wood, as... Rogers did. No. We wait while you get your coat. Thank you. Stay here, Mr. Lombard. Uh, nothing can happen to her if we all remain in this room. in the dark. Where have you been all this time? I went to my room to get this candle. Where have you been? I've been looking for my flashlight. Where is Bloor? Bloor? What the devil are you doing in my room? Your room? No wonder I couldn't find anything. What happened to you? Somebody bumped into me. Did you hear anything? Yeah, it sounded like a shot. Sounded like something fell to me. You are jumpy, both of you. Nerves. It's Vera's. Vera! Vera! What happened? Don't be frightened, dear. What happened? He was in my room. Who? I felt... I don't know, something like a hand. Who was it? I... I don't know. My candles went out. We'll soon find out. Seaweed. It felt like a cold hand. That's what Miss Clayton walked into. Who brought it in here? Who brought it into the house? Miss Brent. Are you sure Miss Brent is... Dead as a doornail. Where's the judge? That's funny. I thought he came up with us. So did I. He was right behind me on the staircase. Yes. I thought I bumped into him. But I heard that shot. Shot? What'd I tell you? What? Why, the old fox knew too much. You say he heard a shot? Yes. Well, you, don't you see? He took a shot at us in the dark. 
You pot us like clay pigeons if we go downstairs. There's one way to find out. It's my own. Ah, oh, it looks too easy. All right, Judge, come outside. Don't think I can't see you. He has been shot through the head. Only one shot fired. Who will be next? Another one proved innocent. Too late. He'd found the solution. That's why he had to be silenced. Silenced by who? By whom? Don't you remember? Uh, one moment, Miss Paythorn. Just when the judge was about to question you, you came up here, presumably, to get your coat. True? Yes. You open that door. Wind blows out your candles. Seaweed touches your face. You scream. Perfect. Perfect. But considerable time elapses, and then we find you way down there. What made you run the wrong way? She didn't know where she was going. She was hysterical. Agreed. But if Miss Claythorne had not screamed, we would still be in the dining room and the judge would be alive. Now, wait a minute. Don't confuse things. One of you two pulled this trick and you're trying to pin it on Miss Claythorne. Now, you wait a minute, Mr. Lombard. We know very well that the judge was on the point of an important discovery. How do we know what was in the judge's mind? I do know. He took me into his confidence. Truth. The entire truth. Miss Claythorne, did you or did you not commit the crime of which the gramophone accused you? I'd rather not talk about it. Ah, but you must. We've all confessed our little uh, errors, all except you. Come now, my girl. You didn't really kill this Barclay chap, did you? Will you take my word if I tell you I didn't? I'm afraid I will. Then you have my word for it. And don't ask me any more questions. Can't you see she's telling the truth? That is precisely her mistake. I don't see why. You will. You will. The judge reasoned thus. Owen enticed us to this island to be punished for a past crime. Right. We three uh, have admitted, uh, shall I say, <laughs> our guilt. Right. Therefore, we cannot be interested in the punishment of crime. Right. Mm -hmm. Conclusion. Owen is the one who has not committed any past crime. I get it. <laughs> what a wonderful brain. To think he couldn't save his own life. Yes, but he saved ours. Yes, of course. That's the important thing. <laughs> Do you understand now, Mr. Lombard? Oh, it's great. Convincing. Mathematical deduction. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Not you either, Bloor. Now nobody has it. That's an excellent arrangement. Now we can all sleep. Let's turn in, gentlemen. Good night, gentlemen. Doctor, I find one flaw in your theory. I could destroy it in four words. Do you want to hear them? Suppose I said, I am Mr. Owen. It would be most interesting. Trouble with you, Lombardy, is nobody can believe you. Too bad, I was just trying to be helpful. Good night, sleep well. well I hope I will. I'm sure I will.
long have you been out there? Shh. Not so loud. But how long have you been out there? Ever since you put out your light. Why? I wanted to be here to welcome Mr. Owen. Locking you in this room and leaving the key outside is a little too obvious, isn't it? It's the doctor or Bloor. And unless I'm mistaken, one of them is going to come through that door at any minute. How do I know he's not here already? You. If you believed that, you wouldn't have opened your window. What about me? Hmm. You're not smart enough. A quick-thinking girl would have confessed to any old crime in order to clear herself of what's happened in this house. Are you sure you didn't kill this fellow, uh, Barclay? Maybe you forgot about it. Or maybe he never existed. Yes, he did. Well, maybe he was never killed. Yes, he was. By someone who was close to you. And you were suspected? What happened to that someone who was close to you? She was my sister. I took care of her to the very last. Oh, now I see that Mr. Owen isn't infallible. You don't belong in this house. You haven't killed your way into it. Aren't you ashamed of talking of matters so lightly, Mr. Lombard? Don't call me Mr. And don't call me Lombard. I'll tell you something about Mr. Lombard. Something else that Mr. Owen doesn't know. Yes. Give me a chance to grab him when he comes in. Don't shoot unless you have to. He's going away. Downstairs? I'm going to find out. I forgot it's locked. I'll go around the other way. Take the gun. Oh, no, you keep it in case I can't get back. But he might kill you. If he does, he's going to make a serious mistake. The other thing he doesn't know is, I am not Mr. Lombard. We know who it is. I heard him go downstairs. Come on, Blow. We'll catch him. How do I know you heard the doctor? Don't be a fool, Blow. We've no time to waste. Well, life is short, isn't it? But I heard him too, Mr. Blow. Oh, you did, did you? It's a nice present you got there. Mr. Lombard's getting generous. <laughs> you go first. Come on, Vera. be a trick. Right, Floor. Maybe he's in the house. One, two, three. Three Indians only. He wants to make us think he's dead. Just to throw us off the track. You don't fool us this time, Dr. Armstrong. What's that? Thank you. 
Tom Hart. Moore, what are you doing down there alone? I think I know where the doctor is. Where? Well, I'm not sure yet. I'll wait for you. All right, we shan't be long. Aren't you being careless unlocking your door when you don't know who's out here? But I thought it was you. You heard it too, eh? I heard you pass my door. Not me. I thought I heard you. Are you sure you haven't been outside of your room? I wanted to ask you the same thing. Maybe Mr. Bloor came back to his room. No, no, no. I knocked on his door. I heard a noise while I was dressing. Like a door slamming? Exactly. You heard it too, huh? What is it? Well, I don't know. Don't you feel all the time that there's someone, someone waiting and watching? Yes, I know what you mean. Oh, it's just nerves. Then you have felt it. Keep a grip on yourself, darling. There's nothing supernatural about this business. It's definitely human. You mean it's the doctor? The mad doctor. Hiding here? We'll soon find out. must have been looking that way. And while he was looking, Dr. Armstrong... That was Armstrong we both heard. But what was Bloor looking at? What do you see? What is it? It's impossible. Let me see. You're going to see. Come with me. What is it? What is it? Tell me! Armstrong. He's been dead for hours. For hours? Since the last tide. No footprints around the body. But if he was... Who killed Law? Yes. There are only two people alive on this island. You... And you. So this is how it ends, Vera. This is how it ends. Come to the truth now. Yes, the truth, the entire truth. Don't come any closer. Oh, I see. That's not quite right, my dear. It doesn't fit in your nursery rhyme. Don't try to talk your way out. You made one mistake, giving me this revolver. Look, I don't mind being killed. But I hate like the devil to be killed for someone else. Didn't I tell you I wasn't Lombard? What is your name? Charles Morley. You're not a very good detective. Mr. Bloor spotted the initials on my luggage the moment I arrived here. Why did you come here under another name? I knew Lombard very well. 
He committed suicide. I wanted to find out if Mr. Owen's letter had anything to do with it. You expect me to believe that? Why not? There's something much more difficult to believe. But one of us is Mr. Owen. I know I'm not. And I simply can't believe that you are. Don't try to fool me. I know I'm not. It's got to be you. There's no other explanation. If you're so sure, go ahead and shoot me. You see, you have a doubt. Don't come any closer. I'll shoot. No, you won't. You can't shoot. You still trust me, and I still trust you. There's got to be an explanation. Yes, that's it. You've got to shoot me. Now, shoot. But it won't hit you. That's what I mean. Shoot. And don't be frightened if I fall. Game of the mind, Miss Claythorne. You came just in time from the last shot. And now the game is over. One little Indian boy left all alone. He went and hanged himself and then the one on. It's for you, Miss Claythorne. What if I don't agree to hang myself? Oh, oh that's been taken care of. Do you mind if I sit down? Every artist has a certain amount of vanity. We, we all like the approbation of the public, and you are my last public. I had two great ideas. The first was a search for perfect human justice. And you've seen the result. To perfect this scheme, my second idea was to find an unwitting accomplice among the criminals invited here for punishment. I needed a respectable fool, and naturally I selected a man whose fear of death might make him extremely cooperative. I proposed a scheme to confuse the imaginary Mr. Owen. It was simply this. I must appear to be the next victim. Remember the seaweed? Armstrong and I placed it in your room. Your scream was perfect. We pretended to rush out, but according to our plan, we came back. Now, I was assumed to be dead, killed by that gun I had uh, borrowed from Mr. Lombard, and which he found later on the step. I counted on everyone's confusion in the dark, and I counted on Armstrong, who played his part to the hilt. I knew no one would challenge the doctor's authority when he would say he has been shot through the head. After that, I had to play my part, and what a part it was. No one would suspect me, least of all the dear doctor who thought that I was about to discover the unknown murder and was waiting for me on the beach and worrying about the success of our plan. A few minutes later, he had nothing more to worry about. Justice had triumphed once again. Too late he had learned that drinking when it gets out of hand can be fatal. So you see, the whole thing has been as inevitable as the nursery rhyme. 
When the boat arrives in the mainland, there'll be ten dead bodies and a riddle no one can solve on Indian Island. Ten? My dear child, I'm an old and sick man. I received my death sentence a year ago. Rather than go painfully and slowly, I choose to leave this wicked world with a proud record of good deeds. How can you force me to hang myself? The only living person found here with nine corpses will certainly be hanged, as the last little Indian has to be. Public hanging isn't pretty. If you'll allow me to give you a piece of friendly advice, do it now, privately, more dignified. And now my work is done. Never should trust a woman. Thanks for the advice, Mr. Owen. 